Hello, my name is Glenn Hall. Today is September 7th, 2020, and this is part 30 of my video series, The Mystery of the Beast. I'm going to add a lot to the last video I did, uh, a single hour, describing the destruction of Babylon the Great. I want to, again, uh, advise you to listen to my previous videos because everything that I say builds upon what I had taught in the previous videos. So I will say things today uh, very quickly that I may have spent many minutes talking about previously, but I'm going to be putting a lot together today. I also want to, once again, commend Dana Coverstone for his uh, prophetic dreams, uh, sh the sharing of those dreams that he's done recently. I left a link to that in my last video. I will leave a link to his uh, YouTube page that has the four videos that he's done so far uh, there. And I really strongly encourage you to watch all four of those videos because what I'm going to be talking about today is going to explain those videos, those dreams from a prophetic perspective in order to allow you to understand what they mean in the prophetic timeline of God. In the last video that he did, that he put up on um, just a couple of days ago, September 5th, he spoke about several things that he saw, and I want to just briefly go over those. He, he first of all saw um, no trade. The ships at sea were not moving. Um, he saw that the Baltic dry index was dead in a headline. There was no, there was no trade going on. He saw power outages in large swaths of the United States, especially the Southwest, that extended up into Canada. Saw the whole outline of America flickering like a light bulb about to go out. When you watch Dana, he, he has been strongly affected by these dreams. They're catastrophic. He called them apocalyptic. Well, what does apocalyptic mean? It means the unveiling. The book of Revelation is the apocalypse. Apocalypse means unveiling or revealing. That's why it's called the revelation. And so the dreams that Dana is receiving are unveiling what is about to occur. And what I'm going to do now is to put it in perspective of particular scripture. Dana saw people standing in long food lines. He saw people with coats on inside their houses looking fearfully outside their windows in winter. He saw that it was Christmas time, but no one was celebrating Christmas. And he, then he saw Christians looking like hot charcoal. They had a glow about them, and they were telling people that they needed to believe in Jesus now. Now. You need to believe in Jesus now. And I'm telling you that now. Dana is telling you that now. You need to believe now. Dana saw fat vultures with rotting flesh hanging out of their mouths. Birds in scripture are evil spirits. So I think this is talking about how the evil spirits have been eating the flesh, so to speak, of people in this world the evil spirits have grown fat on the, on the sin of God's people. And of course, on the sin of everyone else, but even God's people. Dana saw depression as a creature 
with a face mask on and with a smile, and it was choking people and pushing them to the ground. So people will be depressed, people will be in fear. Then he saw well-dressed men at the St. Louis Arch with what appeared to be what looked like nuclear suitcases. Their wrist watches all went off, their alarms and their watches all went off at the same time, and then they got into black SUVs and they dispersed throughout the United States. Each had a Wall Street Journal under his arm and they had heavy sunglasses on. Then he saw a headline of a market crash. One headline declared sympathy for the swastika. Then Dana saw tired people who had lost the resolve to fight because of the depression over the nation. He heard Christians reminding people about Jesus, what Jesus had said about having to flee in winter and encouraging people in their faith. Then he saw lights all over the nation that he knew were churches, both house churches and other churches in the land. He felt that those churches were keeping warmth and hope in their communities. And then a white figure rose out of one of those lights and said, brace yourself, brace, brace, brace yourself on the word of my promises and do not rely on your own strength. This video is called Brace, Brace, Brace Yourself for the End of the Age. What Dana's dreams are showing us is the way it will look at the end of the age. And should it look any differently? Look what Jesus said in Luke chapter 21. And there will be signs and sun and moon and stars, and on the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. People fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, straighten up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. We have had many signs in the sun and moon. We have signs and a couple of stars right now that are going to align right at the beginning of uh, Annika this year. But remember, it was just a few years ago, I believe it was four years ago, we had four blood moons in very close proximity. Someone even wrote a book about that, four blood moons. And then we had that amazing eclipse across the whole United States um, I believe it was three years ago. So we've had signs and sun, moon and stars, and the earth distress of nations in perplexity because of the roaring of the sea and the waves. What is the sea? The sea is the people. We are the sea. The beast that rises from the sea is the leader of the people. The sea is now roaring. Its waves are seen everywhere. And because of the roaring of the sea, because of the riots, because of the manifestations of lawlessness and evil, people are fainting with fear. People are fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. And then you, you hear these dreams by Dana, and of course, He's shaken up because these dreams deal with the end of the age. But what would it look like? What would it look like? Remember, in my last video, I went through Revelation chapter 18 that goes through all of the things that happened to Babylon the Great. Now look at this concerning Babylon the Great. Chapter 18, verse 19. Alas, alas, for the great city, where all who had ships at sea grew rich by her wealth. For in a single hour she has been laid waste. Well, isn't that interesting that Dana's last dream saw 
all of the ships at sea at rest. Verse 17, for in a single hour, all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafaring men, sailors and all whose trade is on the sea, stood afar off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. When Babylon the Great goes down, and it is going down, and soon, the trading that the world is used to will be no more. Why, did, why was Jesus in all of the four dreams that Dana published, every time when this white figure appears, who in my mind clearly is Jesus, he always says, brace yourself. Usually in threes, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. What does that mean? Well, let's just go to um, the free dictionary online. To brace oneself for something means to physically or mentally prepare oneself for something. Typically something that is imminent, that means soon, in an attempt to limit any adverse impact. So, Jesus is telling us to prepare. Get, re get ready for this event that's happening. We should already have seen it. My wife and I have seen this coming for a long time. We have been prepared for this. We have been braced for this. We are ready for this. We've been watching it now for 20 years. And so this is no surprise. And this comes as no surprise. But God in his infinite mercy is giving another warning dream through someone who will be accepted by a large group of practicing Christians, but many Christians who have blown off the things of God, who have blown off the warnings of God to be awake, to stay awake, especially as you see that day approaching. I've seen that day approaching now for 23 years. In 1997, the Hale-Bopp comet came close to the earth. You could see it with your naked eye. I had heard that it was coming for quite a long time. And then one night I went into a wilderness area and I decided to look up where I heard it was. I saw it immediately. And I saw this large ball of light with a tail behind it. But as I looked at it, and it was amazing, but when I looked at it, I had the thought, well, it looks like it's leaving the proximity of the earth now. See, I'd been hearing for about three months that it was coming, but I hadn't bothered to look. Christians have been hearing for many, many years that Christ is coming, but have they bothered to look? Have you bothered to look? Have you bothered to watch? Have you bothered to try to interpret the signs of the times with respect to what the scriptures say? Well, as I looked at that comet in 1997, the spring of 1997, and I thought I saw, it looked like it was leaving. Right as soon as I said those words to myself, the voice of the Lord said to me, if that had been me, you would have missed my coming. That was 23 years ago. For 23 years, 23 and a half practically now, I have been watching, watching, watching. And I tell you that these dreams are dealing with the end of the age. Jesus is returning soon. So, Jesus says, brace yourself. Physically, mentally, prepare yourself for what is coming. Okay, what do we see? We see food lines. We see fear in 
houses, we pe see people in houses in wintertime with their coats on, which to me means that they probably don't have any heat. We see fear in those people, and we see the long food lines. So the natural thing, one thing to do is be sure you have food. Be sure you have heat. Be sure you have a way that you can stay warm in the cold weather. But that's just the natural. The primary thing that Jesus wants us to brace ourselves for is for the utter destruction of everything that we have known. We have depended upon Mystery Babylon. We have depended upon Mab Babylon the Great for all of its wealth because even though we were not among its wealthy, most of us could go to the store and buy anything we wanted to eat. Many of us drive new vehicles. Many of us go on vacations annually, travel to Europe and places like that. So many, many of God's people have been able to prosper from this immense wealth of Babylon the Great, even though it was a wealth that was founded upon atrocities. But we didn't know that, and we didn't take part in those atrocities. Nevertheless, that wealth accumulated. And so now we're coming to the time in which the fruits of all of these ships, all of this trading and everything, is not going to be available to us. And so we have to brace ourselves. We need to be ready to eat rice and beans. Maybe have some dehydrated onions to make it a little more flavorful. Things like that. Have something that you can purify your water with. You know, even get water from a pond and put it through a purifier and drink it. But do some things that are readily available so that you will be able to be okay once this really hits. And it is going to hit. Now, what I want to do next is explain through the scriptures exactly where we are. Now, there are some people who have said that uh, Donald Trump is the Antichrist. I do not believe there's going to be one Antichrist. Um, instead, I think it's like this in John, 1 John 2.18. Remember, John was the one who wrote the book of Revelation. Children... He says, it is the last hour. Wait a minute, the last hour? Has it been the last hour for this entire 2,000 years? No, it hasn't been. It hasn't been the last hour for the last 2,000 years. But remember, my last video was called In a Single Hour. Because in a single hour, Babylon the Great is destroyed. Children, it is the last hour. This is the hour when Babylon the Great is going to be destroyed. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know it is the last hour. There are so many Antichrists out there now. People, So many people who are preaching a syncretistic religion that Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad, Jesus are all just ascended masters. They're all, they're all the same. They lump them all together as people who, who figured it out and made it, you know, in this world and became great as a spiritual master. No, there is only one Jesus. You, you don't rebuke demons in the name of Confucius or the name of Muhammad or the name of Buddha or the name of Krishna. You only rebuke demons in the name of Jesus. What else did John say? Who is the liar? 
But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, this is the Antichrist, he who denies the Father and the Son. That was in John 2.22, 1 John 2.22. 1 John 4.3 says, And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming and now is in the world already. Now the Antichrist spirit was in the world from the time that John wrote his book. But 1 John 2.18, this is the last hour. Many Antichrists have come deals with now. Many Antichrists have come. And then 2 John 1.7 says this, For many deceivers have gone out into the world, those who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Such a one is the deceiver and the Antichrist. See, Jesus Christ came in the flesh. God came to man in flesh. That's why it's such a profound reality to understand that our Creator, our Creator God, came in the flesh to reveal himself to men and to make a way for us to make a way. Okay. Now, don't be looking for one Antichrist figure. Don't be fooled by that. Some people see are waiting for certain things to happen that they think must happen. Or else, oh, we can't be in the the very last days because there's no Antichrist. An Antichrist hasn't set himself up at a new temple in Jerusalem. Well, let's look at that verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we ask you, brothers, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed either by a spirit or a spoken word or a letter seeming to be from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the divorcement comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. Now most people believe this is talking about the Antichrist. It's not. Well, it's it's talking about many antichrists. It's talking about a vast swath of humanity here. And we'll go into that in a little more detail. But I want to focus on a few details in verse 3 because this is so critical. Now, there's some verse, versions of the Bible that say, Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the apostasy comes first. And therefore, people are looking for a great apostasy within the church before the Lord can return. Well, I have news for you. The church has been apostate for almost 2,000 years. Most churches are apostate today. And that's one of the reasons why Dana Coverstone had to have his dreams and had to get out his word so that some of the people who are apostate now will begin to come to the truth, will begin to wake up. But it's not talking about that. The English Standard Version uses the word rebellion, unless the rebellion comes first. Well, what is that? A better word is the divorcement or division, a standing away from a state of being. Now, in one of the previous videos in this series, I talked about the unforgivable sin. And um, let's look at Luke chapter 11, verse 14. Now Jesus was casting out a demon that was mute. When the demon had gone out, the mute man spoke, and the people marveled. But some of them said, He casts out demons by Bilzebul, the prince of demons. While others, to test him, kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste. And a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. And if I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. 
But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than he attacks him and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me, and whoever does not gather with me scatters. Jesus here prophesied. He was making a prophetic statement. Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and a divided household falls. And if Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? A division has occurred in Satan's kingdom, in Satan's household. Remember, everyone used to love Donald Trump. They loved him. I mean, there's many pictures that show him... uh, with arms around a lot of these people that we find abhorrent. Some of these race hustlers. um, You even see him smiling with Jeffrey Epstein. Trump went to the parties that they went to. But you know, Trump did not participate in a lot of the very evil things that they do, like their pedophilia, their child trafficking, their child sacrifices, their satanic sacrifices, their drinking of adrenochrome, their terrorizing children and murdering them in order to get their adrenochrome. You know, Donald Trump doesn't uh, drink, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't use illegal drugs, like a lot of these people do. But he was friends with them. He was very popular among the Hollywood elite. And as I said, he went to their parties. But he didn't get drunk, he didn't get high on drugs. He watched, he knew what they were doing, he saw what they were doing, and then He decided he had seen enough. He decided he didn't like what he saw. And God put it on his heart to turn against them. God put it on his heart to divide himself from them, to divorce the relationship that he had with them. It was like a great divorce, wasn't it? He literally divorced all of his old friends. Have you ever seen anyone so universally hated among the elite as Donald Trump? Think of any family you know, any man and woman you know who loved each other and then got a a divorce. And how then they seem to hate each other. The deep state, the elite, Hollywood, all of the Democrats, many Republicans, many never-Trumpers, all still hate Trump. For four years this is going on. And when Donald Trump wins re-election in just two months, they will continue their hate and they will continue to not accept him as their president. You see, there has been a division in the kingdom of Satan. And this was a sign. This was a sign. Now, let me go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 1. Now, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, verse 3, let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the divorcement comes first. The divorcement came, and... The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction. What have we seen since this divorcement occurred? 
What have we seen happen against Donald Trump, against his cabinet, against the officials in his administration? It's been one lawless act after another. I mean, even look at General Flynn. The charges have been dismissed against him, and yet a lawless judge will not even dismiss the case. And he's still, General Flynn is still under an order not to speak about his case. That's because the deep state players are protecting themselves. But it happened to many more people than General Flynn. Look at the lawlessness involved with the uh, impeachment hearings in the House of Representatives. There was no due process. The Democrats who led it, they would lie about evidence saying they had certain evidence, but there was never any evidence. Look at the two-year Mueller investigation that turned up nothing. Even today, we still have not seen the prosecution of all of these people who have attempted a treasonous political coup against President Trump. What do we see? We see lawlessness. Where else do we see it? Well, as the election has gotten closer, suddenly this COVID-19 pandemic was declared. A couple of months after that, after uh, people were put in fear of their health, businesses were closed down, then suddenly you had an event occur where a black man was supposedly murdered by a white policeman, and then suddenly we have riots in major Democrat cities around the nation. Lawlessness. And the Democrat mayors and the Democrat governors will not bring the rioters under lawful control. They are allowing them to terrorize their own cities, their own states. The man of lawlessness has been revealed. He is the son of destruction, the son of perdition, the one that people call the Antichrist, who opposes and exalts himself against every so-called God or object of worship. Right? Do they bow down to any God? Look at these demonstrators. What are they saying now? BLM, just to, in today's uh, headlines, you've got BLM going and chanting F Christ. So you've got this lawlessness. They, they oppose and exalt themselves against every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, proclaiming himself to be God. Well, how do you take your seat in the temple of God? This is, see, people have been waiting for a temple to be built in Jerusalem. Number one, I don't think there's time left for that temple to be built before the Lord returns. Number two, if the temple was built, it has nothing to do with this prophetic scripture. We're taught over and over again in the New Testament that the temple is our body. We are the temple. We're taught to fill our temples with goodness, with peace, with joy, with love, patience, with kind, kindness, to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to wash ourselves with the Word of God, you know, to read the Word, to meditate upon the Word, to think upon the Word. The temple is us. But here, these people, they took their carnal seat in their own temples, and they therefore proclaimed themselves to be God. This is the Antichrist. This is the last hour. John said, children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Therefore, we know that it is the last hour. And then John said in the book of Revelation, chapter 18, <clears throat> for in a single hour, she has been laid waste. For in a single hour, all this wealth has been laid waste. The great city, Babylon the Great, 
will be destroyed in a single hour. The hour has come. That's why Dana's dreams are so compelling. That's why Dana is so distraught when he sees the picture of the destruction, when he sees the picture of people. And that's why Jesus says, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. We are come now to the end of the age. What did we think it would look like? Evil has ruled this world forever. What did we think the end of the age would look like? The end of Babylon the Great? Of course it has to be catastrophic. Of course we're going to be affected by it. But Jesus wasn't giving us the type of warning that makes me think that I'm going to be harmed, I'm going to be shot, I'm going to be guillotined, or something like that. No, not at all. Their age is coming to a close. Our age is about to begin. Brace yourself. Don't be distracted by the storm. Be ready for the storm. And don't be part of Babylon the Great. Come out of her, lest you partake of her sins and her plagues. The word is still there, because some of you are still in Babylon the Great. It's time to come out. It's past time to come out. That's why these dreams are so poignant. But Jesus is merciful. We now are at the end of the age. Think about what it's going to look like. It's going to be different. We're not going to be able to go out and buy the foods that we used to be able to buy. We're not going to be able to go out and buy the nice coats and the nice things that we used to have. We may not even be able to buy fuel for our furnaces and for our cars. We may not have electricity for our lights. Part of Dana's last dream was that there were huge blackouts in many parts of the nation. It's going to be much different, but it's going to be much better because God now will establish his kingdom. The kingdom of God is coming. God's will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And he wants us to be prepared to come into the wonderful things of that kingdom. So be encouraged by Dana's dreams. Don't be afraid. Don't be mournful. Be encouraged. I'm encouraged. I'm excited. Yes, it's a it's a horrible picture. But what else would the end of the world look like? See, that's what we call the end of the world. And so we thought, well, the world's just be destroyed because we're going to be raptured out of here and we're gone. No, afraid not, guys. I think that we who are prepared will escape these things and I don't think that they'll touch us. For example, we haven't celebrated Christmas in my family for a long time. So I'm not going to be sad because there's not a bunch of Christmas decorations this coming December or toys to buy or any other presents to buy and give and so on. I've done the things that I can do in the natural to be prepared with food and water and heat. I just bought two cords of wood. 
and I had another couple of cords besides. And I have a saw, and I have an axe, and I have a water purifier, and I'm a pump that hopefully will pump water if I need it. But I've done some things just in the natural. So I have braced myself. You brace yourself. Don't be in fear. Jesus did not give those dreams in order to put his people into fear. He gave those dreams in order to give his people courage and strength for what is coming. Because we are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and we are going to be the lights that bring comfort and hope to people and then that begin the kingdom. So, be blessed in your hearing of the Word of God.